The last decade of the 20th century marks the start of a new era in man's exploration of space. In the coming years, interplanetary spacecraft will study the spectacular rings of Saturn, the dense clouds of Venus, the scarred terrain of Mars, and the hellish surface of the Sun. All of these missions build on the legacy of the two Voyager spacecraft, which are now speeding out of the solar system after completing one of the most extraordinary journeys in the history of man. Voyager's grand tour of the four giant outermost planets marks the conclusion of man's first reconnaissance of the solar system. Jupiter, two and a half times more massive than all the other planets put together. Saturn, its rings believed to have been born out of the collisions of long dead moons and asteroids. Uranus, its tranquil atmosphere marred by only a few observable clouds. And Neptune, so distant from the Earth that it's invisible to the naked eye. In the late summer of 1977, two unmanned spacecraft, Voyager 1 and 2, lifted off from Cape Canaveral atop Titan Centaur rockets. Traveling uninterrupted through interstellar space, the Voyagers will endure forever, long after everything man has ever built has crumbled into dust. In the event the spacecraft encounter alien intelligence, both voyages carry a copper phonograph record, a message, celebrating the sights and sounds of Earth. And friendly wishes. These unique discs contain photographs of everyday life, as well as voices, offering greetings in 55 languages. There are also animal noises, the music of Beethoven and Chuck Berry, a baby crying, laughter, rain, and a heartbeat. All of the planets in Voyager's path were in perfect alignment. Something that occurs only once every 176 years. The spacecraft were in position to visit all four of the outer planets. A grand slam. An interplanetary home run. In March of 1979, nearly two years after launch, the Voyagers approached Jupiter, the celestial body that so fascinated Earth's first modern astronomer, Galileo. Passing through the boundary where the supersonic solar wind slams into Jupiter's magnetic field, the spacecraft's instruments recorded a strong bow shock. Named after Jove, the supreme god of Roman mythology, Jupiter is an enormous whirling sphere of turbulent gases, big enough to hold over 1,300 Earths. The Voyagers discovered thin rings of dust encircling the planet. Tiny grains containing silicon or carbon, like a fine haze of ash and smoke. Jupiter's atmosphere displays a dazzling variety of alternating patterns. Cold, light-colored zones dominated by ammonia ice crystals in the higher altitudes, and warmer, dark belts of solid sulfurous particles in the lower altitudes. Voyager's cameras afforded scientists spectacular close-up views of the Great Red Spot. A storm three times the diameter of Earth raging in Jupiter's atmosphere. Voyager atmospheric scientist Dr. Andrew Ingersoll. The Great Red Spot is a counterclockwise rotating storm, sort of like a hurricane, that has persisted for over three centuries. We were amazed that this spot could survive in the midst of all this turbulent activity. With at least 16 known moons, Jupiter could well be considered a mini solar system. The Voyagers flew by the four largest, finding Callisto pockmarked by craters, Ganymede etched by icy parallel grooves, Europa smooth and icy, and Io glowing a cold and sulfurous red orange. Nine active volcanoes were found on Io, the first observation of live volcanoes beyond Earth and Venus. These geysers were spewing hot sulfurous gases a hundred miles, high enough to hit a passing satellite. Voyager project scientist Dr. Edward Stone. If I were to pick one discovery to represent the body of discoveries that Voyagers have made, I would pick the discovery of the volcanoes on Io. 
these were totally unexpected and really forced us to con reconsider our whole concept of the evolution of small uh, moons uh, which are orbiting in the outer solar system. Pulling away from Jupiter after a joint reconnaissance of more than six months, the Voyagers got a healthy boost from Jupiter's orbit and made a beeline for Saturn. Mystifying man since the dawn of history, Saturn bears the name of the mythological god of the harvest, who reigned in the Golden Age. Traveling at more than 55,000 miles per hour, Voyager 1 arrived in November of 1980, only 12 miles off course after an interplanetary journey of more than a billion miles. Voyager's instruments found Saturn's atmosphere to be a cold ball of hydrogen and helium gases, racked by huge whirling storms and whipped by winds of up to 1,100 miles per hour. Saturn's magnificent rings, thought to have been the result of collisions between earlier moons and asteroids, consist of thousands of particles swirling pieces of rock and ice, streaked like the grooves in a phonograph record. Voyager atmospheric scientist, Dr. Andrew Ingersoll. What Voyager discovered was the incredible structure in the rings. Saturn's rings are really composed of countless numbers of particles, ranging from the size of dust and perhaps larger particles the size of houses. These particles are constantly bumping into each other. These grooves are there because the rings are constantly being disturbed by satellites orbiting in with the smaller ring particles themselves. As the Voyagers swept by, sunlight penetrated, backlighting and brilliantly illuminating the splendor of the rings, like the spokes of a gigantic Catherine wheel. Voyager 1 flew within 2,500 miles of the surface of Saturn's largest moon, Titan. One of only three moons in the solar system known to have an atmosphere, Titan may help unlock secrets to the origins of life. Voyager project scientist Dr. Edward Stone. Certainly one of the more exciting discoveries at Saturn was the atmosphere of Titan. It's an atmosphere which is mainly nitrogen like that here on Earth but which contains methane, so that the photochemistry going on there today may resemble very strongly that which occurred here on Earth billions of years ago before life evolved. By swinging around Saturn, after a close-up view of Titan, Voyager 1 was propelled out of the plane of the solar system and is now traveling toward interstellar space. JPL project manager Norman Haynes at this point, with Voyager 1 out of the picture, and Voyager 2 capable of going the extra distance, NASA gave us the go-ahead for a grand slam, enabling Voyager 2 to explore the last two giants in the solar system, Uranus and Neptune. First detected in 1781 by English astronomer Sir William Herschel, Uranus, in Greek mythology, is the name for the heavens. Five years and almost a billion miles after leaving Saturn, Voyager 2 reached Uranus in January of 1986. Like all the other planets, Uranus spins like a top, but tipped over on its side. Strangely tilted and off-center, Uranus's magnetic field extends in a bizarre corkscrew tail millions of miles into space. Its magnetic poles are also wildly askew. Voyager 2 discovered two new rings. Dark, narrow, thin bands of ice, rock, and dust with particles the size of a fist. Although Voyager 2 discovered ten new Uranian moons, the most eagerly anticipated event was the close encounter with Miranda, one of the most bizarre moons in our solar system. Close-ups of Miranda revealed a strange and wondrous landscape including a canyon 12 miles deep. Miranda may have collided with another moon, shattered, and then by the force of its own gravity, slowly reassembled itself into this chunk of rock and ice. These digitized photographs are a silent testament to